Okay, Dana Milbank is an author and a columnist happens, with the Washington Post with an 8% gap in, uh, in the poll of polls when polling is on in a, in a two-cornered fight. If you're looking at this election from the outside, you'd say American pundits and pollsters are being overly cautious because they got 2016 horribly wrong. That this is an election that sailed in favor of, pre uh, of Joe Biden because if you look at it, it's mostly the Republican wins from 2016, which are now the tight races, whereas virtually everything the Democrats won seem to be comfortably in the Democrat bag. So are pundits being overly cautious in your view, sir? Uh, I think they're being uh, deliberately cautious because of the surprise of 2016. Uh, and also because it's not really just a popular vote uh, in the United States. It seems very clear that Joe Biden's going to win the popular vote and probably by a very large margin. Uh, but as you know, uh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote in 2016. So it's about the Electoral College, and it will come down to the same half dozen uh, 10 states uh, that it has in the past. Now, Joe Biden's looking very strong in those uh, states as well. Anyway, it would be a uh, a huge shock here uh, if uh, if Donald Trump uh, did prevail. It will not be a huge shock here if uh, Donald Trump is uh, disputing the election, whether that's in, in court or in the streets. Mira Shankar, what's at stake for the world, not just for India, but in this contest between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, what do you think is at stake for the rest of the world and for mankind? Well, firstly, I think they offer very different visions of America and uh, very different approaches to core pol uh, policy issues, whether it is the pandemic, uh, whether it is the economy, whether it is foreign policy, or whether it is issues such as energy and climate change. So uh, clearly, uh, there is a paradigm uh, uh, difference uh, between the policies that the two candidates espouse. And therefore, for the world, whichever one wins is going to determine how American influence uh, plays out in the world. Uh, you've had President Trump who has um, walked away from international agreements, you know, most important, the climate change agreement, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was an economic free trade agreement, and the Iran nuclear deal. So you have three key agreements from which President Trump has walked out. And here, Joe Biden says that he will rejoin the Paris Agreement and also look at a more ambitious agenda. And he hopes to pledge, uh, you know, that America will be carbon emission free by 2050 and that in terms of electricity it will be carbon emission free by 2035 and he has a whole you know agenda for infrastructure and renewable uh, res uh, research and innovation which he thinks is going to power the american economy and american technology the other major area you're going to see a difference is on Iran, where Joe Biden has said that if Iran continues to adhere to the nuclear deal, he could consider rejoining the deal, which would mean, again, a fundamental shift in the U.S. approach towards Iran under President Trump, which has basically been to apply pressure and to rely on the Gulf states and Israel to, uh, to, to take the uh, you know isolation of Iran forward in the region. Uh, the third area where I would see a difference is in terms of the importance that Biden is going to give to alliance partners, because President Trump, to some extent, upended traditional U.S. policy um, and, uh, you know, basically asked, what are we doing here? Why are we here in Asia? Why, why, why is NATO important? I mean, he asked very fundamental questions about the pillars of American foreign policy. Uh, and Biden will work to restore the strength of these alliances, particularly NATO, uh, and uh, also uh, to look at their traditional alliances in Asia to meet with the challenge of China.
ใช่ประ